Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome internationally renowned broadcaster, commentator, and author, Mr. Tom Brokaw. Thank you. It is a great pleasure to be with you this evening and to be here with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra at Temple Square. The choir and orchestra have long been an important part of the Brokaw family music library. How blessed we all are, for the choir is truly an American treasure. On Christmas Eve, 1948, somewhere between Wiesbaden and Berlin, a 27-year-old American pilot gazed into the night sky. The heavens were so full of stars, it seemed they would overflow and tumble to earth in a brilliant display of Christmas generosity and joy. Hal, as he was known to his crew, wrapped his hands around the yoke of a C-54 cargo plane, which was packed with 20,000 pounds of flour. This is the real spirit of Christmas, he thought to himself, as he guided his plane toward Tempelhof Air Base in West Berlin. When World War II had ended three years earlier, Germany and its capital city were divided between the Western Allies and the Soviet Union. Then, in a grab for power, Stalin blocked ground transportation into the city. So to preserve freedom and keep two and a half million West Berliners from starving, the United States and Great Britain began transporting food and other basic supplies by air. Hal was one of hundreds of Americans who participated in the historic Berlin airlift, which was called Operation Vittles. That snowy Christmas Eve, as Hal radioed for clearance to land, his mind wandered back six months to the day that changed his life. He had been standing at the end of the Tempelhof runway, taking home movies of arriving planes when he noticed about 30 children on a grassy strip just beyond a barbed wire fence. In broken English, they asked about the planes, how much flour each one carried, and whether the airlift would continue. Although the children had been on meager rations, they were more concerned with freedom than with flour. They wanted what Hal had, the opportunity to pursue their dreams. So for almost an hour, Hal answered their questions before saying goodbye. But as he turned away, one question lingered in his mind. What made these kids different? All over the world, children were known to beg candy from American servicemen. These children had little to eat and no candy at all. Yet they were grateful for what the airlift had given them and asked for nothing. Their gratitude melted Hal's heart. Instinctively, he wanted to give something back. Digging into his pockets, he found only two sticks of gum. From little things come big things, his father used to say. A broad smile across Hal's boy's face. Giving so little to so many could cause a squabble, he reasoned, but a quiet voice within him urged him on. So Hal broke the gum into four pieces and passed it through the fence. Without a word, the four children tore the gum wrappers into strips and passed them to the others, one by one. Each small nose was pressed to the paper, breathing the minty smell. Never had he seen such expressions of joy and wonder, even at Christmas. As Hal watched in amazement, his mind raced. If only I had more to give, he thought. 
he had his own rations of gum and chocolate, maybe his buddies would be willing to donate theirs. Just then, another C-54 roared over his head and an idea formed in his mind. I could drop candy from the air, he said to himself. He quickly explained his plan to the children. When they asked how to recognize his plane, he remembered flying over the family farm back home. I'll wiggle my wings, he announced, spreading his long arms and waving them up and down. The children giggled with delight. Just promise me you'll share the candy, he said. All heads nodded in agreement. But the next day, Hal had secretly enlisted his crew to donate their rations and to make parachutes from handkerchiefs. As Hal's plane approached the runway and the grass came into view, he wiggled his wings and a knot of waiting children exploded, running and jumping in the air. With the precision of bombardiers, the airmen pushed the candy out of the flare chute and white canopies floated to earth. 30 children ran with open arms to catch the treasures. Hal and his buddies were as excited as the children. The thrill of giving was irresistible. Soon, they were dropping parachutes every day, hundreds of them. The press caught on. Reports went out. Mail for Uncle Wiggly Wings began piling up at base operations. Then Hal found himself standing before his superior, expecting to be court-martialed. But the colonel surprised him. Halverson, he said, General Tunner thinks it's a good idea. Soon hundreds of airmen were donating rations. Operation Little Vittles quickly uh, captured the imagination of people everywhere. Candy and handkerchiefs poured in from around the world. Hal became known as the Candy Bomber and the chocolate pilot. Across West Berlin, children gathered to catch the parachutes and share the candy with each other. And they sent hundreds of thank you letters, like the one addressed to Dear Uncle of the Heaven. Some included maps and instructions. Fly along the big canal to the second bridge. Turn right one block. I live in the bombed out house on the corner. I'll be in the backyard every day at 2 p.m. Drop the chocolate there. <laughs> day by day, the parachutes brought peace and the candy renewed hope. The children made friends of their former enemies and their parents' hearts were softened. The wounds of war began to heal. By December, the Little Vittles operation had gathered 18 tons of candy from American candy makers and three more tons came in from private donors. The spirit of Christmas was descending on people everywhere, lifting them up in the joy of giving. At Christmas Eve, the 27-year-old American pilot blinked back tears. The stars overhead could not be more beautiful than skies overflowing with parachutes tumbling to earth in a brilliant display of Christmas generosity and joy. His father was right. From little things come big things. Hal, in his cockpit, pulled back on the yoke as his wheels rolled onto the familiar runway. This is the real spirit of Christmas, 
to give whatever we have, no matter how small the gift. In that moment, Hal Halverson prayed for the courage to never give anything less. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the candy bomber himself, Colonel Gail Hal Halverson, now 92 years young. Welcome, Colonel Halverson. I've known about you for a long time, but it's just such a great pleasure to have gotten to know you this week as well. And what a lot of people don't realize is that you went on to become the commander of Tempelhof Air Base. You served in uniform for many more years, and you've been an ambassador of goodwill around the world. We thought it only fitting that we should give you two sticks of gum because they changed your life and the lives of so many. Well, thank you, Colonel. This little gift changed my life forever. Thank you very much. And you're wearing the same flight suit that you wore back then. I got it big enough to start with. <laughs> That's important. I think you, in so many ways, embody the spirit of Christmas, the generosity of your efforts on behalf of those people who had been our enemies after all, the gratitude that they gave you in return, right. and the idea that we should all try to live together in peace here on Earth. Hal, I want to wish you Merry Christmas, and I think we should wish everyone here Merry Christmas. Yes, well. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a good one.